Thank you very much, Cloda. And thank you to the Intercultural Education Services um, for this opportunity. It's basically our first roadshow uh, for the project, but it's not our first collaboration, as Cloda rightly pointed out. We've been working with the what used to be the Inclusion Diversity Services, now the Intercultural Education Services, um, from the dates that Cloda mentioned. And the reason being that the significance for us as a national cultural institution in the Republic of Ireland is there is no equivalent of these services in the Republic for teachers. But our museum is an eclectic collection of Islamic, East Asian and European rare books, manuscripts, religious materials, unique within the island of Ireland because no other collection exists like ours. So you can imagine when I started the education programme in 2000, I looked out and I went, well, where do I start? In a landscape that was predominantly Roman Catholic, white middle class, an education system in the Republic with no diversity really in the classroom. I come from a migrant background, a mixed heritage, and I never found myself <laughs> reflected in the traditional Irish curriculum. I was always made feel I need to be part of it. Whereas now, with migration since the Celtic Tiger, um, our diversity has really evolved in the Irish classroom. Yet there hasn't been a reference for teachers to go to in the Republic in terms of learning resources and how to deal with children of different migrant backgrounds and how can we bring them into the classroom without making them feel like they're different. I met Mary Yar, a um, former colleague, at a launch of the Intercultural Education Strategy of the Department of Education and Skills in 2010. And I stood up and I said, look, we're here to help you. We have this incredible collection. It can be used to support teachers. And I never really got anywhere, but Mary Yar said to herself, who's that young upstart there? I want to work with her. And that's how we started to collaborate insofar as, you know, it just, I felt stuck because there wasn't any other reference point in the Republic, but there was definitely a wealth of information and knowledge and expertise with the Intercultural Education Services, so much so that we continue to work with them today, plus our other partners like the Ulster Museum, like Joan Heretic, uh, the education, her, her education consultancy, and other partners. So partnership is a way to go um, for us to learn with teachers and for teachers. And this schools project, is the first step, I hope, in the right direction for the Chester Beatty and our partners um, as a way of collaborating and developing a kind of foundation of an intercultural schools programme in the Chester Beatty for teachers right across the border uh, and remotely as well. Because I know in the Republic of Ireland, broadband is an issue, especially out in remote places. And also travel is an issue teachers can't always get into Dublin. I mean, we were in touch with a school in the southwest of Ireland, really remote place. It's going to take them four hours to get to Dublin and then four hours to go back. And I don't think that's fair on teachers to, to be expected to get up at four or five in the morning, bring a class of kids, get them on the train or bus and get them into the museum. They're going to be exhausted by the time they get in. So how can museums access or create access for teachers and children uh, using digital as well. So, in a nutshell, this is what the Intercultural um, Museum Programme, what does it look like for schools? This is the one question uh, that I had. But also, why didn't I start this programme when I started the department in 2000? And really, I gave you an idea of what the landscape was like at the time. But now is the time because the curriculum has been changed and reformed in the Republic of Ireland, and I'm trying to capture a moment where I'm trying to really influence the Department of Education Skills, I think that's going to take a lifetime, um, to, to recognise that cultural diversity in the classroom. That there are children who have diverse backgrounds and that a museum like ours, and, and the Ulster Museum for example, can help foster great dialogue between uh, museum collections, teachers and children to help un create that understanding. So we've teamed up with very, very, uh, I suppose, appropriate partners such as Mary Macklett College, the largest teaching college in the Republic. And this is Trish. Trish, do you want to put your hand up? Yeah, Sorry. Trish. And uh, we got to know Trish through another network called the Anna Lind. And we've done some really interesting projects looking at interfaith dialogue in contemporary Ireland. Uh, Maynooth University, Ashling's unfortunately is not here, but she's also part of the Anna Lind network. 
and looking at inter, interbelief dialogue as well. Um, the Intercultural Education Services, I need not say any more. And Heretic, uh, Joe, who we've worked with through other European projects since 2009, looking at museums, sorry, 2007, there you go. Um, looking at learning, intercultural dialogue, and at the moment we've, we're on to our third Erasmus Plus project looking at creativity and innovation for schools. It's an 18th month project, it's kind of short and sweet, it's been funded by the um, Creative Ireland and the Irish Human Rights and Equality Commission. We're the first museum to receive funding from the IHREC. So it's looking at research, develop and build the first intercultural museum programme for schools in the Republic of Ireland. It doesn't exist in any other museum. So that's a unique point for us. We've had the way we've tried to kind of collate and get an understanding of what's happening uh, on the ground for teachers and for museums uh, museum educators in particular, and the third level um, environment, is what is happening at right now in terms of what's happening in intercultural education, both in teaching practice, in the classroom, and also in the museum world. And we collated case studies from our partners to get an idea of what's, what's current. It basically is there um, to help understand, I suppose, and to showcase the richness and diversity of teaching practices around world cultures, faiths and languages, both in the Republic and in the North of Ireland. But during our dialogue and our, our, our meetings, we looked at informal learning as well as formal. And in the informal sector, we looked at Mother Tongues, which is a, uh, an independent organisation in the Republic of Ireland that supports language, language uh, multilingualism. Unfortunately, they couldn't be here today, but they are doing some excellent work around supporting teachers, which basically was wiped away after the crash, supporting teachers in language support for children with diverse languages in the classroom. And youth work, there's a lot happening in the youth work sector that might be invisible to most, I suppose, to museums in, 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 one, um, in one case. So these case studies have really helped set that foundation of where we should go with the formation of this building, uh, the, the program for schools. There will be a, a draft available. Um, we're going to put it online for all of you to access at the end of this project, which is going to be launched in March 2020. And that hopefully will influence museums, particularly in the Republic, to embrace cultural diversity in their practice. They're a little bit afraid of it because they see that their collections, which are traditionally nationalistic and Irish, that do not reflect cultural diverse audiences. And what we're trying to say is you can use museum objects to address cultural diversity and intercultural dialogue. And this is a way of influencing them, hopefully, to take that next step. So the recommendations that we got from those case studies um, was to create a respectful environment in the museum particularly, but also in the classroom. And also to have, um, we've got four to five strong topics uh, which reflect and respond particularly to our collections, because our collections, as I said, Islamic, East Asian and European, they are so broad and diverse. Where do you start, particularly for teachers in schools? That's something that we discovered through these case studies. Object-based learning. Hands up here, who knows what object-based learning is? Well, you're in for a surprise. Okay, so that's basically how we can't take the museum with us. I'd be I would be in a lot of trouble. But we can take objects that teachers and students can handle. That tactile, I mean, all, do all of you use some kind of handling aspect in your teaching practice? That's a good example. Well, museums can do the same. It's, not a, it's a no brainer, and we're going to do that with Joe today. Um, visual literacy, does anyone know what visual literacy is? Oh, you're in another surprise. You're in for another surprise today. It's basically something, I've had a eureka moment two years ago at a conference for museum educators. It's basically getting children and teachers to use their visual thinking capacity. What do you see? What do you think? And what do you wonder? And we've been piloting tours last week with primary schools, and it seems to be, a, seems to be working out quite well. But we're training ourselves, and our, we're training our guides, and we're trying to get our museums to start thinking differently when approaching our collections. Creativity. Creativity, and it, again, it's a no-brainer. How can we foster creativity for teachers and students and the museum professionals um, in their engagement with museum collections? And that opportunity through object-based learning, 
through visual literacy, through it creativity, to foster a space for dialogue, for conversation. Because I know a lot of guided tours tend to be, this is, this is object A, this is object B, it's this, 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 let's move on to the next one. And there's no space for any engagement or dialogue. That can be quite boring. Um, pair work and teamwork to encourage students and children to work with each other and learn from each other through these experiences as well and allow time for feedback so that the museum listens to the children and listens to the teacher rather than the museum standing there going this is our area of expertise we know what we're talking about so it's a real it's a shift we've had the opportunity offered by trish in mary i to prototype uh, visual thinking and object-based learning with fourth year students in February. We had an hour. Um, we asked them, have they ever considered working with the museum for teaching? No. By the end of the session, would you consider working with the museum for teaching? Yes. We introduced them to visual thinking and object-based learning and they grasped it very, very quickly through teamwork, through dialogue, through looking at objects and responding looking at see, think, wonder, and, and unpicking um, collect our collection, which for a lot of people is quite hard to access. And that has provided a good case study. And this tends to be the typical offer um, for schools by museums, which isn't a bad thing, I'm not negating this. You've got guided tours, self-guided tours, hands-on activities, including workshops, handling kits, online education activities, and CPD. And the Ulster Museum has got a really, really wonderful breakout space for handling. You know, that's, I don't know if any of you have been there. And I'm sure there are excellent examples in Armagh and all around uh, in the museum sector here. And then um, we've been working solidly on devising new themes with input from Mary I and Renouf <coughs> and my two colleagues who unfortunately can't be here today to unpick based on the case studies and based on their reflections of the collections and how best to un like discover what themes would be relevant for teachers and students when they come into the museum. So journeys is one theme. How things are made is another theme. What is sacred, because we have a lot of religious content in our collections, although we're not a religious organization. Fashion is a wonderful theme that pops up in our collections as well. And fantasy and imagination. And that is the foundation of creativity and innovation. And I've, as I said, I've started two tours last week with two primary schools. We looked at journeys and we looked at how things are made. And I won't spend too much time on it, but we've had really, really positive responses. So fresh off the block. And I need to share the feedback with um, the project partners as well. But so far, so good, touch wood. <coughs> CPD, this is our first CPD. Um, and we'll be uploading learning resources on our website and share with our partners and for all of you to access as well. And at the moment, Joe and the Chester Beatty are working on trails for self-guided tours. So this is a living project. It's not over yet. And that's it in a nutshell. <laughs>